Hey folks, welcome to Burr Mountain. Today we're going to do something that we didn't think we would get as far along as fast as we did. You may remember we did a video a while back about taking cuttings from our pot mums. And we used no rooting hormone. It was all just the magic of, of a, a mixture of potting soil with a little biochar in it. And we have today, this is, uh, I think we did this probably about a month ago, roughly. It was uh, early March, mid-March, right around in there. And today is April 21st. I do have a little spittle bug problem. We try to get those guys knocked down, but uh, sometimes they just come back. But anyway, we wanted to, these guys all look like they took. So like this is a pink mum as an example, and I'm pulling it out. And if you'd zoom in on that, Mrs. Producer, you can see that it has roots. So most of these guys are in the same thing. So they're now at a perfect point uh, to pot these guys up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these guys in uh, one gallon nursery pots. Wait, that seems a little plug in a big pot. Yeah, but it's gonna grow into it. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna mix our own potting mix for this. So the idea of what we ultimately wanna do with these guys come um, like late summer, or let's just say middle of September-ish or so, is uh, they will be at a size that will uh, start blooming. Because remember, when these guys' mums, when they hit 13 hours a day length, they begin to initiate the blooming sequence. They'll start putting on flower buds. So our objective is going to be is we're going to plant these guys, and then we're going to pinch out the centers because we what we want to do is get side lateral growth on a lot of these guys. So they're already starting to make little branches off to the side at the, at the leaf axles. But the whole point of what we're gonna do is just pinch these guys and keep pinching them until we get a nice kind of rounded look on the pots itself. And then once we get to 13 hours, which is roughly about middle of August or so, maybe mid to late August, um, these guys are going to switch over. The, it's just the, the day length is going to switch them over to putting out their flower buds for a bloom that will start um, like the latter part of September. So by that point, what we're going to do with these guys is this is, this is when we're going to put, when they start the buds up and they start showing color in their buds, we're going to be able to put these guys out in uh, flower pots around the landscape. So the idea would be, you know, a decent sized pot and we'll put in, you know, a couple two or three of these guys to give it like a really big full look. But we're gonna cheat and we're not gonna take them out of the one gallon pots. We're gonna keep them in there so that we can easily pull them out and put something else in there for, you know, next spring, which would be like bulbs or something of that nature. So these we did, we have um, a full array of, let's say two, four, five. We have 30 uh, different um, uh, plants, they all took 100%. I didn't, didn't have one that failed. And usually I have something that fails, you know, like, but these guys all, they were just all ready to rock and roll and they did really well. So we got pink and a yellow and a, um, a white. Unfortunately, my red died, so I didn't get any red. Uh, but this would be good for us to, you know, play with and really get some pretty good looking colors. These are all what, what you call like button mums. They're they're really small blossoms. They're so, pot. And so yeah, so what they do is when they bloom and they're pruned right, they'll make like a a, a drift of color uh, in per individual pot. These are not cutters. No, they're not cutters. They're not specimen type things that you would see like a football mum or something of that nature. So, question is, what kind of mix do we do? Well, we're gonna make our own. I've got three components here. I've got a really well rotted um, fir, pine, um, basically it was wood chips that were done when we took out trees like four years ago now. I think yeah, it was 2019 we took those trees out. This was the brush, the leaves, the branches, etc. They were ground up and uh, we piled that stuff aside on the property to let it just age out. And it's really done a good job. Um, so this is pretty much at a point now 
where there is some high full stuff in it you can find uh, but it's it's pretty well rotted and it'll be uh, providing a lot of good uh, bulk in the pot and then we have our own urban compost uh, this is this is the stuff we made. I shouldn't say it's urban compost. It's our own homemade compost uh, from materials on the property. And this is pretty well aged. This was made last fall. So it's approaching six months old now at this point. And then our own uh, biochar, which has been uh, charged uh, biologically, it's aged a year. Uh, and so it's, that's gonna be added to the pots to provide a little more aeration, but also at the same time, Biochar can hold up to seven times its weight in water, so it'll help with water retention in the pot itself. So it's like the fur, the chips for bulk, and some biology, but most of the biology and fertile, fertility from the compost, and then the biochar to kind of help stabilize it. So what I want to do is I want to make the mix roughly uh, a third compost and a uh, little more than half being in the um, fur, and then the balance of it to fill it out would be uh, the biochar. So the biochar will end up being somewhere around maybe 10% of the overall uh, bulk of the pot. So we're just gonna use this mortar tray here, and um, I'm, I'm not gonna mix you know a huge amount today, but if you were mixing a very large amount for a lot of stuff, uh, you would probably use like a cement mixer or something like that. So this isn't going to be scientific. I can't guarantee that every, every uh, mix I make of this is going to be exactly the same. So what we're doing is just trying to go for on average. Now this compost was mostly uh, garden waste and leaves and uh, material of that nature. And there's a little bit of, sometimes you get a little bit of cardboard that didn't digest. And then the biochar would be the last addition, and that's roughly about 10%. I don't want to go too much more than 10%, basically because I, I just want to make sure that I have enough nutrients in the uh, in the mix between the compost and it, and that and the main addition for about this that I'm putting this in to the mix is for water retention itself because pots always particularly in the summertime can tend to really dry out So that's the basics of it. It's got some sticks in it. It's a little rough, but that's okay. It's perfect. It's a very light, airy mix, and we should be able to get, you know, good roots to grow in this guy. Now I'm going to fill the pot up pretty full, and then I'm just going to put kind of a divot in the center of it like that and start with my first flavor. These are the pink mums. And uh, I guess I'm gonna start with this guy here cause it's got a label. So that way I don't have to make a label for the pot. I brought out labels. Oh, well look good. <laughs> cause it's always important to know what you're planting, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now these guys should be able to withstand being outside this time of year. Our temperatures uh, finally started to warm up a bit, so we're in the 40s at night. And, uh, and we've uh, only been in it one day. <laughs> really? Seems like it's been a lot longer than that. Okay, I stand corrected. I mean, it's been cold up until like <laughs> yesterday. I thought I thought we had at least two days behind us. <laughs> oh, wow. big difference. Okay, so basically, what I look at is is this is. This is the potted mum itself. Now, when you kind of look at it and you say, well, there's a growth center right here. And what I want to do is I want to pinch that out and I'm just going to use my finger to do it. And what will be left is at the leaf axles right here and here, plus the leaf axles that are 
below it will begin to branch out. So the whole concept is we'll probably do at almost three pinchings off this thing. Um, so the, the, the idea is once it grows out a little bit more, you know, and gets a little more bulk behind it, then we'll pinch it again. So today being April, we'll probably do it again um, depending on how things roll early June and then maybe do a last one in uh, near the um, now probably mid mid July maybe a month or so later depending on how if it goes. it turns out that they're not you know because we're not going to shape them like domes and stuff like that if they just are small but you know slightly branched and stuff I'm going to be really happy with that I don't have to have it being those little dome shape ones that you get yeah i think i think what i I'm, I'm gonna try for that shape because i think you know it maximizes your potential for blooms so okay. I, i'm but, just saying if we're not successful on that that's okay because so you won't hold me personally responsible no i i just <laughs> want them to be small and controlled so i can put spots of color yep. around our landscape and if it's that they're bushier rather than dome shape, that's gonna be fine for me. Right. So that's it. The basics of it is, and you know, we'll, we've got these one gallon pots that, these are all, uh, I should say, our recycling things. Cause you know, in a sense, whenever we bought something from a nursery over the years, we kept the pots. And so that we could reuse them on the property. So, you know, if you have old nursery pots around, around the, the house, or uh, you know that you may have uh, accumulated over the years that's always a good thing to you know use and it's like these all have nice roots to them so these should they should grow really well we had lots of folks that on the original when we were taking these cuttings suggested all kinds of different kinds of um, natural rooting hormones and stuff like that and we really appreciated that you know and we have now a list if we want to go yeah. to do it, you know, we'll have that. Well, I have to say I'm surprised that we got yeah. 100%. We just wanted to see part of the reason was we wanted to see if they had to have any rooting hormone. And we were pleasantly surprised that it wasn't absolutely necessary. However, you know, we're now prepared with the information of what we could use in Dead, like pussy willows and um, what was that other one honey something like that well I remember it was in the willow family yeah we had a couple of those suggestions but there was something else that I want to say I thought it was honey um, honey locust no honey Honey, it like, mean honey, honey. Oh, really? I think that was. His, I could be wrong. I'd have to go back and review. But you know, we had all kinds of suggestions, and we'll we'll be prepared for the next time. Yep. So here we go, and we're. This is our good start. We're getting started on these guys, and you know, before we wrap today up, I just kind of wanted to, you know, show you guys that that you know it did work. And you know, this was a great way to get these guys in your landscape. And, you know, using last year's plants and keeping them alive over the winter then provided a benefit. Make sure they're not pro propagation prohibited. That, that's always important. Make sure that whatever you do when you propagate stuff, that you're not taking stuff from something that says plant protected or patent protected or something of that License. nature. Yeah. And, you know, that, that you can propagate it yourself. So these guys, you know, when you think about it, um, you can get them fairly cheap, I guess, at a home center as it used to be, or a garden center or something of that nature. But they're usually somewhere between five and, you know, 10 bucks, depending on the size of them. And so this is something when you think about it, it didn't really take much effort. It took a few minutes to take the cuttings, you know, just uh, checking them on a daily basis to make sure, you know, they had moisture till, till they were rooted and they rooted very fast. Uh, we had them on a heat mat at 75 degrees and they rooted in about, um, I mean, the, the, I could tell that they had developed the ability to take up moisture because the leaves no longer were wilted after about 10 days. The only downside was the spittle bug. Yeah, we had a spittle bug infestation come in. We did use a Jadam wetting agent and some uh, eucalyptus uh, herbal um, 
extract and it, that knocked him down real good, took him out. But, um, you know, I got a little lapse. I haven't done anything in the last uh, week or so on them. And so I got a few of them where they kind of made a comeback. But um, yeah, that, that wetting agent is, is an insecticidal soap acts it, and it, uh, it actually acts as a way to desiccate uh, that little foam pocket that these bugs make around themselves. And I can give you an example of what we're talking about here is this right here, as you can see, is like a foam. They, they, make, they take the sap and they, make, they blow bubbles and they make a nice little foam protection around them. But the Jadam wetting agent, the, the soap you can make um, yourself, actually desiccates that and, and then the insect itself is very soft bodied and can't really uh, fight back against the, you know, the desiccation of the soap as it begins to dry on it. So it does a, it does a very good job of knocking them down. And that's, uh, we did a video or did we do a video on that yet? Mm -mm. Oh, we should do a video on making wedding agent. Yeah, the thing was is that you're now telling me the solution to my spit bugs, spittle bugs, after all these years of picking them off my overwintered dianth. <laughs> yeah, the problem was that we just didn't know about that at that uh, point. You know, that's it's the not first that I was being crop mean. That they attack. The first crop they attack and with a vengeance and you spent, I, I spent tons of times trying to get those washed off, picked off, whatever, and then suddenly they disappear. Yeah, they, they have a very short, like uh, when the, the season moves to really starting to warm up, but they, even they kind of move into a different- But if it's not totally warm, they're just done. Yeah, it's like, uh, like about middle of June, they just, Oof, disappear so kind of a strange thing but yeah we should talk about that so we get we, and also uh, I want to make some jadam sulfur which is a, a liquid sulfur compound that's an excellent fungicide uh, really will help with stuff like apple problems scab and things like that that nature and so since we're getting into fruit trees I want to make certain that I get ahead of any kind of fruit tree diseases that we have going so that's a future stuff. Anyway, today we just wanted to, you know, drag this out as long as possible so we could get as many commercial breaks. You're no. there. <laughs> Cut! You're not supposed to tell him the truth, man. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you just talk a lot. So anyway, uh, I'm going to finish the rest of these guys up and and you know get them pinched, and so we'll start the uh, process on it, and we'll check back in, you know, probably like when we're doing the next pinch. Do another update just to see how they're going and uh, fertilization on it. That's one last thing I want to cover. I will be using um, uh, the liquid fertilizer, probably a compre grass type stuff on these guys and just uh, probably hit them at least um, every time we water once a week. You know, we'll probably water depending on how the heat's going. We'll probably end, maybe end up watering more than once a week, but we'll only fertilize once a week. So we'll have it like on a seven to 10 day type rotation type thing, just to give them enough. They don't need a high nitrogen. They just need, you know, kind of a pretty, a well-balanced fertilizer. Any thoughts before we wrap it up? No, um, I just think that it's exciting to know they all took. Yeah, super. So. Okay. Folks, as always, stay safe out there. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.